Greetings, friend. I'll show you how to solve a Sudoku puzzle that is impossible to solve using just trial and error. I'll show you how to solve this puzzle using three tricks that make this puzzle much easier. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. You can make a few solves here at the very beginning. You might notice with these two ones and the one in column five, you can solve for a one here in block five. And then with the twos, you have these twos in rows five and six, and this two right here, you can solve for a two in block six. And then with the sixes, the only place for a six in block eight is right there. Other thing you might want to see is that you have an eight, nine coming down column seven. You have an eight, nine coming down column nine, and you also have this eight, nine cutting across row eight and so the only place an eight nine can be in block nine is right here in these two cells that's a hidden pair eight and nine but that is it uh, at this point it is brutally hard and you only have three by value cells to look at right now these two right here in this cell right here is either a one or a three and i'm going to warn you you cannot try to bifurcate and get a solution to this puzzle. If you try to start with the eight or nine here, or the eight or nine here, or the one or three here, it will not solve. That's what I mean by being impossible. In fact, Philip Newman, and I thank you, Philip, for letting me feature this puzzle on this channel, put together a proof showing that it is impossible to solve the puzzle that way. And this is the first puzzle I've seen, because usually a Bowman's Bingle can solve anything, it won't solve this puzzle. So you gotta know the three tricks I'm about to show you. And a little bit about the ratings. This is rated 11.9 on the Sudoku Explainer rating, so S-E-R. That's a normal solver, and it gives a rating that most Sudoku experts are familiar with. 11.9 is basically the highest. Um, and Hudoku, and what you're seeing for the rating I gave it, shows 10,000 points given to the hardest strategy possible, which is called a brute force, where you're just plugging through, trying to figure out how you can make an elimination, and it requires four brute force applications in Loki to do it that way. However, I got three tricks for you that will make this much easier. And by tricks, what I mean is these are extreme strategies. They're not simple, but they're extreme strategies that a human can reasonably spot. And so the first trick is you want to focus on where there's the most digits place which is over here in columns five six eight and nine all right and you might notice all these cells these can be a three five seven this can be a three five seven this can be a three five seven this can be a three five seven except for right here you can actually add a one and you can do the same right here one three five seven which you have to notice the first trick is you got to notice this pattern right here. I'm going to fill out all of these cells and color them. Okay. This pattern. This is, if you can recognize this pattern and know what it means, you're going to make a lot of progress or at least get to the first part of this puzzle. What you have to ask yourself is every cell contains three, five, or seven, except for this one, which has an additional one. And so you say, what if this wasn't a one and you had just three fives and sevens? Would that be an okay way to solve this puzzle? And let's remove all the marks because you're going to use a little bit of coloring to figure out, could you eliminate the one right there? Could this work? Does a three, five or seven? And so what you want to do is, is there's three different digits, three, five and seven. We're going to use coloring, purple, yellow, and blue to denote the three different values, right? So if this purple, if that is a three, this would have to be something different. So that could be a five, that could be a seven. The main point is that the value of the purple is the same throughout the puzzle. The yellow is the same and the blue is the same and they are different from the other two. If you put purple here and then you put blue here, it was one of the possibilities. What you'd see pretty quickly is yellow and blue means this would have to be purple and this would have to be yellow. Okay, and in here you could pick, you can do it purple or blue, it'll do purple. And then you'll see quickly because of this blue, that has to be yellow, this has to be blue. And then you'd see there's going to be a problem here. Namely, 
you have blue and yellow here means that would be purple right it can't be the yellow one it can't be the blue they both see this right here blue and yellow that would also be purple that's a problem right you can't have two purples in the same cell that means they'd be the same value and it would break the puzzle and maybe you're thinking well timberlake you know it was the value you chose over here you know that one so maybe if that was blue it, it doesn't add up right right so if that was blue you can you know this one would be yellow right because of the blue and purple this would have to be purple and then you'd see you're gonna have still have the same problem blue and yellow we well, got purple and blue here it means that has to be yellow but with the purple and blue here this would have to also be yellow and so what i tell you to do is you go through this as many times as you need to to understand that this puzzle will not resolve itself if this pattern is only three different values you need to have a fourth value introduced or otherwise it will not resolve itself and this is awesome it's something i have covered before but it's been a while this is called a tri-value autogon shape or pattern tri-value means three different digits but it's also called a tritagon i've seen it or a, a chromatic pattern because you use a different colors to try to figure out if there's something there that uh, will break the puzzle and by using that we know and you remember this cell actually contain a one we have to put a one right there or else you will not be able to solve the rest of the puzzle and this is just the first trick we got two more very hard tricks strategies you still need to apply but they are possible for you to see and so we can put a one right there and before we move on and see what that actually does to the puzzle and get to the second strategy i do want to hear from you what term do you favor for this trick i just showed you you would call it a tri-value autogon, a tritagon, chromatic pattern, or something else. Put it in the comments. Help me grow the best Sudoku community on YouTube. I learn so much when you share with me your feedback. We can make some easy solves here. With these two ones and these two ones, you can solve for one right there. And then with these two ones and this one, you can solve for one right there. Makes that a three. And now with these two ones and these two ones, we can solve for one right here. You're like, all right, maybe we got to the hard part of the puzzle. Not so fast. You may notice across row one, you have all odd digits. One, three, five, seven, nine. You just need two, four, six, and eight. Four and six right here. Eight's right there. This has to be your two. Four and six are repeated right here. So that's got to be your eight. And now you have a nice four, six naked pair okay we can make a few more solves here you might see with these two nines now you can solve for a nine and block two and then with these two sixes you can solve for a six in block three okay we can do a little bit of cleanup here because of this three you can eliminate the threes from these two cells and because of this one you can eliminate the one from right there i just want to make sure we get a little bit of all that cleanup out of the way and so now we're getting to that second trick that you need and it's extreme strategy this is very cool i will admit the first trick and then the last trick i'm going to show you i found and i've seen before from my previous experience with tough sudokus and with phillips puzzles this one was a bit trickier i had to get some help from phillips solutions document yes he actually wrote out a solutions document to loki because so many people wanted to know how to do it and he puts in the proof so thank you philip for this puzzle Thank you for teaching us the logic behind these extremely difficult puzzles. I will put a link in the description if you want to check out that document. And so the second idea you have to understand involves the tri-value autogon, but in particular, these three cells. You need to see the relationship between these three cells. And you have to ask yourself this question. Since this cell sees these two, you can have two possibilities, right? Either whatever value this is, these two would be different. So if that's a three, this could be a five, and that could be a seven. The other possibility, if this is a three, is that these two cells could be the same thing. They could both be fives or they could both be sevens. And what you have to know and look at when you're looking at these three cells is why they have to be three different digits. What's the issue if these two cells were the same? And I'll make those blue. 
and I'll make this one yellow to kind of go along with my earlier color. So if no matter what this value is, if these two were the same as each other, they're a different color, what, that, what does that do to the puzzle? Well, this would be, you know, let's say that's purple, right? And then purple and blue would make this yellow. Okay, and I'd make this purple. And you're gonna kind of follow it, this would be blue. And then with these two, that would be yellow. And then this would be purple. And you're like, okay, no big deal, Timberlake. You know, we kind of been down this road before until you get down to these two cells. You'll see there's a problem. Yellow and purple means this has to be blue. Great. But then yellow and purple means this cell would have to be blue. So if these two cells are the same as each other, you end up with this deadly pattern that violates the ability to solve this puzzle. You're going to end up with both these have to be blue. And you can change the colors out to yellow or purple. It doesn't matter. You'll end up with an issue here in block nine where these both have to be the same value. And we know that can't happen. So we have to avoid that. The only way to avoid that is to make all three of these digits different digits, right? So if this is a three, that could be a five, that's a seven. That could be a seven, that's a five or five, seven here. This could be a five or a seven. So how do we avoid that deadly pattern? The trick is to know that that's a seven right here and you have another three, five, seven, make a triple along row eight. Because of this five, that can't be a five. And now what you wanna see is, is one of these values create that deadly pattern we're trying to avoid. And sure enough, let's check out the sevens. If you put a seven right here, it can be a seven or a three. With this seven, you'd have to put a seven right there. And what you would notice is you'd eliminate sevens from these two cells. You'd also eliminate a seven from this cell. And so now with our three cells, this one, no matter what it is, it would force these two to be the same. That's the deadly pattern we have to avoid. And what Philip calls this uh, relation of these three digits, he calls it a remote triple. Okay, a remote triple, that'd be three different digits. And so we have to avoid this. We just saw that three, five, and all these three cells would break the puzzle. So we know that you cannot have a seven right there. This has to be a three. So the remote triple is the second trick that you need to know, and that's gonna help reduce this puzzle to a much easier to solve puzzle. And this is great because now we only have one more trick. And what's nice, the last trick that you have to see, it's actually an advanced strategy I've featured many times. It's personally one of my favorites to show you. And we've done a little bit of that already, but it's gonna be a simpler version. But first, it is an advanced strategy. We can make a few solves to get us to this point where we're gonna get stuck again. Put a three right there. Remove those threes. Now the only place for a three in block eight is right here. And then you can remove the threes from right here and solve this cell for a three. Awesome. In the corner. Bum, bum, bum. That can't be a three. This can't. And now you can remove the threes from here. Solve this cell now for a three. And then with these two threes and this three, you can solve for a three right here. You have two possibilities for a three here. And now you have two possibilities for a three here, but we can break up that gridlock. You might notice you have a naked pair of five, seven along row six, and then you have six other digits filled out. The only thing left is an eight. So you can put the eight right there. And then with these two eights, you can solve this cell for an eight, displacing that Snyder three, allowing you to solve for the three right there. And so now we solved all of the threes and we have solved these eights. And so what we've created, you may see, is a bunch of five, seven pairs. A bunch of five, seven pairs. And let's move on and see what else we can do here. This also has to be a five, seven. This can be a four, five, seven. This is two, five, seven to finish up column four. And then when you look right here, one, three, one, two, three, eight, nine, four, five, six, seven. This cannot be a six and you're like okay there's something we can do here that'll create a solve and let's follow these five seven pairs and we're going to do a little bit of coloring here we'll use blue and orange this time so 
no matter what value this is, this has to be the opposite, right? So that'd be blue. And then this would be the same as our original. So if this was a five, you can see that these two would be sevens. If this is a seven, these two have to be fives. And so we can alternate color all these five, seven naked pairs. So this one would have to be the same as the blue value. And this would be orange, right? So that's blue, that's orange. This is blue, that's orange, this is blue. Okay? You can come down here, you can see that that's going to be orange, and that's going to be blue. Now, any place where the blue and orange intersect and see each other, you can remove both candidates, right? Because if that's a 5, that's going to be a 7. So any place that sees both, you can eliminate both of them. You might notice right here, this is an orange cell. This is a blue cell. They both see this cell right here, right? So if that's a 5, that would have to be a 7. If this is a 7, that would have to be a 5. Regardless of what the values are, we can eliminate a 5 and 7 from both from this cell. And I just use multicoloring, you know, two cell multicoloring to figure that out. You might also notice that this is an XY chain. It's also a remote pair. All those work together for you to solve this. It's all the same strategy, same logic applies. You can solve this cell now for a two. Awesome. And so that's a trick I've shown quite a few times before. And it's very, very valuable. And now we've done the three main tricks. How far can we get after solving this for a two? Because with these twos, that's got to be a two. And these twos, that's got to be a two right there. And we solved all the twos. Now let's look on for the eights. All right, with these two eights, and this eight, you can solve for an eight right there, displacing and disambiguating the nine eight right there. And then with these nines, you might notice in column three, this can't be a nine because of that nine. This can't be a nine because of this nine. So you can actually solve this cell for a nine. And you got a five seven across the row. You got a five right there. This has to be the seven, and that's going to be the five. And now we're going to be able to figure out all these fives and sevens, right? Because this is going to be your five. That's going to be your seven. This has got to be your seven. This has got to be your five. This has got to be your seven. That's got to be your five. Here's your five. Here's seven. All right. Here's a seven right here. Okay. We got a five right there, two there. This has to be a seven. So we can get rid of these sevens. And get rid of these sevens. All right, what else can we do? You might notice you can solve this cell because it is a full house in the block and in the row. So this has to be a four, which allows you to solve the six and four right there. So now we can figure out five, four, five, and a six right here. Nice. And we see another full house. We can solve this cell now for a seven. That's all that's missing in column three. Let's look right here. And actually, you might notice with these sixes, you can solve for a six right here. Meaning this has to be a four to finish row five. Awesome. I don't see a four in row one or block one. So there's your four, and this is going to be your nine. I don't see a nine in block four. So there's your nine. And our last digit to this incredibly hard Sudoku is a five. Learn more about how autogons work in this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching.